Cursed Feathers, Part 1, an audio drama written based off of something I did with my friends. Part 1, The Tainted Child. Across the vast seas of Hyrule, there were many mysterious islands. Hidden among Dragon Roost and Outset, these islands have little known about them, and in some cases, a lack of info on certain islands could mean the end for those who reside on it. Black Reef. Thousand miles away from any other land structures, this is one of the islands which applies to this cursed rule. When you first encounter it, the land seems like a peaceful place. However, it hides a dark secret. Come along, young one, and I shall tell you the story about the Isle of Torture and one of its victims. It all started in Light Tree Village. The locals were all going about their day speaking to their friends in warm, happy voices. It was a light-hearted contrast to the darkness that loomed over the rest of the island. The sound of a flute drifted throughout the little village, creating an aura of absolute peace. In the southernmost part of Life Tree, a group of children frolicked around happily. Hiding behind an old oak, a little girl watched them. She was a very strange little girl, with a black griffin wing and horn on the right side of her body, and the head feathers wing and arm of a griffin on her left. The other kids would always tease her, calling her a freak accident, and indeed she was. See, her mother had been forced into a gene splicing experiment that added the genes of these creatures to her firstborn child. The result was a hidden child, silently watching the rest of the children. A red-haired woman emerged from a house close to the play area. Angelica! Time to come in! She called out in a light and airy voice. The little girl quickly ran out, avoiding the stares of the other kids, and ducked inside. Her mother sighed, picked her up, and began running her fingers through the little four-year-old's white, gray, and black hair. Listen, Angelica, I must tell you something of great importance, her mother told her. A blank expression on her face. Angelica looked up at her mother, tilting her head. You remember the trip I told you about? The one some friends I told you about were taking you on? Yes, Mommy! Well, today's big day. You'll finally get to explore some of the rest of the island. How does that make you feel, little one? Angelica stared up at her mother, eyes having lit up excitedly. She bounced off of her mother's lap and ran around in a circle, flapping her tiny wings happily. Her mother chuckled a bit. Then the sound of footsteps could be heard outside. Child, come here. I want to give you something before you go. She says the little girl skidded to a stop and ran over. Inside of her hands was a light blue blanket, all wrapped up neatly. Ooh, pretty! The child cried, snuggling up to it. And so soft! Thank you, Mom! You're welcome, little one, her mother replied, then quickly pulled her child close in a hug. I'm going to miss you. I'll miss you too, Mommy, she replied, then picked up her blanket and snuggled with it again. A knock was heard at the door. They've arrived. Good luck, young one. Don't worry, Mom. I'll come back soon. The little girl replied, then went to the door, completely oblivious, oblivious of her dreadful fate. The men at the door were all wearing lab coats and stern expressions. One of them pulled Angelica over to him and tied a rope around her hands after forcing them behind her back. She cried out in alarm and began wiggling around, trying to escape. The rest of the village looked on, emotionless glares on their faces. She could have sworn she'd seen more than smirk. The man threw her into a cart roughly, then hopped into the passenger seat. They rode off into the dark, dreadful forest. It had been a long time since her capture. The child was in the basement of the building she was in, trapped inside of a cage. Her life had become a schedule of torture and inescapable pain. Wake up. You ever the scientists were merciful enough to give her. Train. Cage. Tests. Short break. More tests. Another break. Even more tests. 
By the end of the day, she was always extremely tired. Even so, she always took the time to read something off of the bookshelf next to her cage before she went to sleep. One day, things changed. A scientist picked her up, wrapped her in her blanket for some reason, and carried her upstairs. There were a bunch of experiments staring at the little bundle from their cells. A few snarled and swiped at the scientist aggressively, but he ignored them. With a harsh toss, he threw the little girl into an empty cell, then left. Poking her head out from the blanket, she looked around, only for her gaze to be met with a glowing pair of red eyes. She shrieked and hid again. There was no telling what her future held.